Interactive English 2 Academic Report Structure Good day everyone. Today I'm going to talk about the structure of an academic report. It's true that reports might have different kinds of structure, depending on their purpose, but this is the structure that we expect you to use for your group presentation and group report. The structure in this case consists of five distinct parts, which I will now describe in detail. To start, as you might expect, we have the introduction. The introduction tells your audience or readers what your topic or question is, and gives some background information about it. Background information should include the importance of the topic or why it is worth discussing. The introduction can also present some previous research into the topic, possibly with statistics. If there has been a general change between the past and present in terms of the topic, it might be good to describe the change. In any case, it's a good idea to use sources in your introduction. You should finish your introduction with a clear statement of what you have researched or investigated. Next comes the methods section, which is sometimes called methodology. Here you briefly describe how you carried out your research or investigation. How did you get your data? What instruments or tools did you use? If your research involved people, how many participants did you have? If possible, describe their general characteristics. For example, uh, Hong Kong high school students in their last year of study. If you are using a survey or questionnaire as a research instrument, and you asked some personal questions, such as age or major, you would report some of that information here in the methods section. After the methods section, you can start to discuss the results of your research in the results part of your report. This is basically reporting the data that you have collected from your research tools or instruments. You present the results of your questions with a focus on interesting results. If your results are statistics, it's probably a good idea to use some graphs to communicate the numbers visually. In the results section, you present interesting results in a straightforward way. But in the next part, the discussion section, you look for interesting relationships among your results. For instance, do the results look different according to sex or age or home country? Do the results of your particular participants show many differences from previous research on participants from other contexts or countries? The discussion section is the place to tell your audience or readers why the results of your research are valuable. Finally, we finish the academic report with a brief conclusion. The conclusion section summarizes the main findings from your research and emphasizes any new information or insights that you have uncovered about your participants. You should also mention, at the end, any limitations of your research, which means why your results are limited in meaning. This might have to do with your sample size. For instance, uh, how many people you surveyed, or the narrow range of participants limited to a specific context. Some report writers at the end of the report also make some suggestions about future research and areas where more investigation could be made. Well then, those are the five parts of an academic report that we would like you to include in your assignments. The introduction, methods, results, discussion, and conclusion sections. 
Each part plays an important role. It is worth repeating that you should use sources in your report and that they usually appear in the introduction and discussion sections, and sometimes in the conclusion as well. I hope that this talk has given you a better idea about how to present your topic and research in an organized way in oral or written form. Good luck.